Ah, uh, hard drive is started, and I officially am starting the Avocado Show. Yes, calling it the Avocado Show. It's official. I got Cookie Joe's Avocado logo, and why not call it the Avocado Show? So we're going to start actually catching up on the donos. So the first dono here on the block is uh, from later la Lateral Tap. So Lateral Tap wants Queens of the Stone Age, and the name of this track is Keep Your Eyes Peeled. And like per usual, everybody knows that if uh, somehow, some way you miss it, because every this was such a short notice with this coming on in the morning, that I'm pretty sure that a very high percentage of these folks are either sleeping or hungover or something. I don't know. So remember the VOD channel. Go ahead and sub over there. That's where I drop this if you miss it. Obviously, then if I'm saying it now, they're going to miss it anyhow. They'll never know that I said go to the VOD channel. Drugs are bad. Okay. Guys, let's do this. Queens of the Stone Age. All right. Oh, was that it? Damn, that was short. That was killer, man. I fully dug that. I didn't even expect to hear that from them. I think um, what uh, Varex777 said was the fact that um, their radio, and that's funny that that's even something that we put in the, we think about because radio doesn't exist anymore, but in the time the Queen of the Stone Age you know, uh, we're, we're giants. We're, was the time of radio and the radio cuts, you know, I'm sure that the, um, uh, the A&R person who's, you know, selecting what the radio cuts are, obviously you're going to be a lot more upbeat and pushy and stuff like that, that this track would have definitely been like an, a B side. Oh my God. I just dated myself B side. That would be on a 45. Um, I love the drums. The drums had a really, the whole thing had a very, dark hollow vibe to it and so the the video itself too which i was like oh that's pretty damn sick but cool had a dark hollow vibe to it and i think the quirkiness of the guitar line and the tone and especially the turnaround of the riffage at the end i'll have two scoops of the riffage please um with that weird you know roomy dark tone of the drums really set the pay, uh, you know s set the darkness for it but the melody that that he wove in between all that weirdness was unreal it was perfect it was perfect it was perfect darkness and heaviness and spooky i think would you agree was it now, uh, could you guys remind me again i know that uh, queens of the stone age was kind of a super band right um who were the um <clears throat> like members from other bands right so who were the, the members of the other bands? And let me know while I scoop up our next track. Uh, the next track is from the Kebab Seller. Hey, Kebab Seller, what's going on? Um, God, one of my VODs, I can't find where he has one of his tracks there that he did. So I'm, I'm hoping I can hunt it down and I dropped it somewhere in Dropbox. But uh, how's it, Kebab Seller? How you doing? Uh, this song is a game. <coughs> yeah. I know that Dave Grohl was in it for a bit. Vodka man. Okay, from the kebab seller. This is a game. Uh, this is called Dragon Age. Stand by. Let me get the hook in. For those of you who are dropping in right now, yes, this is a breakfast spinning the wheel of cheese session. And uh, yeah, that's what just what's going on. And instead of the wheel of cheese, I had huevos ranchero con queso. Claro que sí, en efecto, boludo. All right, guys, here we go. Let's do this. All right. Ooh. Title track, this is called Dragon Age Inquisition Theme. Sounds like the Halo thing, right? Oh, jeez, I was like...
I was expecting that phrasing from the horns. Something really super unique about this one that makes it really good. Good morning, Amon. <laughs> um, is that, you know, the, the opening was beautiful. Just that the dynamics in the strings, it's a great way to open up a track, especially if it has some darkness in it. Uh, but as soon as the storm drums came in, or whatever the percussion that the composer used, that... That kind of had that halo feel, you know. Dun, 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 But the horn phrasing that we just listened to, so we have this da 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 and it's got kind of like this pseudo six eight kind of swing to it. Um, but a lot of the arpeggiation that's going on there, or the ostinato with the strings, is keeping it kind of straightforward. Quarter notes are happening there. So when the horns came in with its phrasing, it kind of gave me a little slight kind of shift in how I was vibing with the, with the track rhythmically. And it's very unique, it was very well done. dark piece. I don't know exactly if, I guess, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition theme, so I take it that this, the name of the game is Dragon Age. Yeah? Well, oh, thumbnail, hello. Um, but as far as kind of a bold opening, it just definitely, you know, pushed out there emotionally that a battle's ensuing, you know, that your game is going to be as intense as this competition. That's the unique thing about theme composition, which... Me now more as a listener than ever before as a composer, uh, but understanding the, the dynamics of being a composer for, for anything that thematically you have to create, you really have to, it's like, a, it's like a sound shot over the bow of what to expect sonically, you know, music wise, for the audience member or the viewer or the game player or, you know, if you're sitting in the theater and stuff like that, you know, there's it's going to tell you, it's going to dictate to you what your journey is going to be about, you know? So in this case, you know, the whole game is probably dark and gnarly, but if you notice though, like I said early on, this track started off really pretty. So I don't know the game at all or the game story. So, you know, obviously in most stories that I've noticed, even in the more darker games, there's always some kind of soft section where there could be some kind of bromance going on or, or something like uh, some kind of relationship that builds amongst either the soldiers or the characters inside that even in the, in the darkest um, uh, video games or uh, stuff like that, there's always some kind of passage with the strings that are kind of, I don't know if they sound that bad, but so. <laughs> um. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'll refresh. Thank you, Snake. Let me just refresh and see what I got here. I see it. $40,000. Okay, Park Pal. I know you're here, Park Pal. Park Pal, are you here? Yes, you are. Park Pal wants a band called Arcade Fire and David. Wait, let me open this first. Arcade. Hang on. Recall. I may have heard the song somewhere before. But this is a collab. Bowie's last five performances. Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay, this is great. What a great choice. All right. Park Pal, thank you so much. This sounds like this is going to be fun. Everybody's got to love a little Bowie. All right. Just 
sets you in such a great glide. A little chicken skin moment here. the other musicians are with them? This is a band and David always out front. I never heard of them. Because I'm old. God, I like that guy's voice. Staring down that one note he's got to hit.
David Bowie. God, we missed it. incredible artists like that. You know, just absolutely. Yeah, Park Pal, very unconventional, but extremely powerful and so well done. These people that are, 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 are standing up giving an ovation like that because, well, David Bowie obviously is a legend, and I guess the band, forgive me, I'm, I'm not very well versed in pop culture music of, of, of anything of, of that nature, So, uh, but apparently this, this band in Canada uh, was very good. I, I love the fact that it took um, those abstract instruments and stuff like that, put it together, and, still, and, and not only managed to make it rock, but also, um, there was just something that that whole opening, the, the chord changes, the way it was performed, the live performance element in that was in of itself very uplifting. The non-sterile perfection that we hear in today's music, and that's not a dig, it's just where we've gotten with our production, you know, perfect harmony, perfect metric locking up, perfect everything, it's just fucking per oop. it's just so... <laughs> My imperfection in expressing myself just happened. <laughs> you know, when you hear something that's all live, everything's going on. There's little nuances there that are happening in that performance that just make it so human and make it so emotional as a live performance. <laughs> but that opening, uh, before I got into dun, 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 that, that whole thing was very entrancing, you know. And I found it really, really, uh, like it pulled me. I don't know. Um, maybe it's just my old ears and where I'm at. at, at wow, it's 8.20 in the morning, guys. Bruh. Park Pal, thank you so much for that. That was a really great listen. I really, really was digging it. All right, guys. We are going to... Wait, no. The Park Pal, wait a minute. Yours is coming up next, Park Pal. Um, I forgot. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Truzokia. Who's, who's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fart now. Maybe in the morning isn't good for me to work. Who's, uh, what, whose was that? David Bowie's suggestion. Oh, I know it was a kebab seller, I think. Was it? Oh, no, I better just shut up. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, this is from Park Pal, right? This one, the Arcade Fire. Is this you? I think so. I'm believing. Stinky cheese coming soon. Here we go. Ink. Uh, oh, I know what happened. I forgot to. Um, I, forgive me. I'm, uh. Just ignore everything I said in the last minute and a half. Just give me a second. I, I just have to. Just catch my brain cells up. I forgot to delete something. I looked at the list again. I'm going, the, 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 the. German, you're next. My bad. You guys give me a hall pass for being old in the morning. You know, it takes a while for the Ginkoba to kick in, you know. German, this is a game from Pokemon. And, uh, oh, it looks like the Wheel of Cheese is getting kind of full, though. All right, that's going to be coming soon. German. This is a song from Pokemon. Is, is German here? Hey, how are you? So this is a wild area. And, um, ooh, German says this got bagpipes. We do bagpipes. I love bagpipes. Very powerful, very, very powerful instrument. Let's go. Uh, this is um, Pokemon. Sounds like the opening of the Academy Awards. Oh. Huh, but I don't hear the drones. Oh, very nice piano sneaking up behind it. Great dynamic from the closer. That 
sounds like an old dulcimer sound. The engineering on the bagpipes really super unique. I love how the authenticate uh, the auth authenticity of the arrangement is the fact that through this section here, they put in that kind of very tight snare drum that they use in the, um, uh, the marching bands with the bagpipes and stuff where it's usually one of the bigger drums and then they, uh, or, or they have one big drum and then they'll have it like Tom Tom sized drums. And then they have that snare and that snare is such a unique sound. The only two times that I ever reckon, you know, listen, I hear a snare like that. I think of two things. I think of a bagpipe, uh, marching band. I don't know if that's the correct way to call the the unit or the troop of of bagpipes, or those other drummers that do the inline marching, you know, and they're and they're choreographed and stuff like that. There is a split. Amon said something earlier, and there is a split between the sounds of the bagpipe. And I don't know if the other one is an I, I can't pronounce it right. Ulian, U Ulian, or something. The only thing that I'm going, I don't understand because I, for me, from what I understand from the bagpipe is that when you play the bagpipe, you will always have the drones, which are the tall things, and we, Wheelian, Wheelian, thank you. You have the drones, right? That the three things that stick up, or is it four, from the bagpipe, which maintains that drone. And then you have the chanter, and that's what they call the thing that they're playing here. But I don't know that you can play the chanter without hearing the drones, because that's the one thing that I feel like I'm missing. Is there is there not the the drone in there? So I don't know. It could be me. Hey, Yuko, how are you? Steel guitar strumming in there is an important part of the uh, rhythm. So what key is this in? I guess it would have to be B flat if it was. Uh, tune for the bagpipes but The arpeggiation there of those instruments there, I don't know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I can't, I'm going to just take a, an educated guess just from uh, the era of thousands of sounds I've listened to through the course of my life and career as a composer as far as modules and stuff. There are some of those things that reminded me of old like D50 or D550 style uh, harp, so some of that arpeggiation, I, I couldn't tell if that was, you know... Um, live or if it was uh, you know played by a musician <clears throat> the um the bagpipes and wheelin wheelin of oh, wheelin um something that's really really a challenge that i've seen not not that i know of 
but there's times where if you see one bagpipe player, if they drift slightly in and out of just a little bit of tuning to the, it's just very, it's almost, you can't even tell if you have two of them playing and there's a little drift you can, you can kind of tell a little bit of the, 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 that it's live. If you would, it's not sampled anything happening there because then you start having some tonal inflections that are kind of moving between the bagpipes and stuff. Bagpipes are very, very challenging to keep in tune from what I've understood in YouTube videos. I've, I really do love the bagpipes. And so I've looked it up on how to play it and stuff like that. I don't have a set, but it's just very interesting in what it is that they have to, you know, do this kind of thing in order to play the bagpipes. You know, you're breathing, you're doing this, and you're playing. <coughs> so it's got a very unique, um, you know, the bladder, the air bladder and everything. It's got a unique history and stuff. But the tuning, you know, I, you, you got it. You got us. From what I understand, you've got to suffer for maybe the first few weeks, if not the first few months to finally get yourself into, you know, a complete tuning. And then, of course, the tuning of the drones, too. It's a very unique instrument. I love it. It's a haunting instrument. You know, uh, it's a beautiful instrument to call to action and stuff. But I fall apart every time I've been to, unfortunately, more than enough funerals in the last eight, ten years. And I'd say about a third of those. All of a sudden, I look out of the corner of my eye and I go, oh, my God, there he is. You know, there's the guy with the with the bagpipes and stuff. Let me get some tissues because there's just something that happens. It's such a incredible instrument that that harken. I don't know if it's the drone vibe of it or whatever, but oof, that's just. Um, yeah, the oboe effects. Hi, Camel. So anyhow. Yeah, that was a great listen, man. I love that. The weakness of the bagpipes. Oh, God, I love bagpipes so much. I did see there's a couple of young ladies, I think, that do rock and roll bagpipe. And uh, kind of, it was unique. I kind of liked it. You know, it was, it was, you know, they were like covering songs and stuff like that. <clears throat> very talented and very dedicated, you know. And, you know, to take an instrument that has such a classical history. Well, I mean, that happens all the time. You've got oboe players playing Zeppelin. You've got... You know, bassoon players playing, you know, Stanley Clark bass lines. <laughs> so push the instruments as far as you can. But, um, um, uh, you know, there's this, these young ladies that, that are very interesting and they're very dedicated. And it sounds great, actually. I'm like, that's pretty damn good. You're kind of stuck in a key. You can, you're kind of stuck in a few ways that you could do things on the bagpipes, I believe. But anyhow, I am her on because it's morning time and I have most of my coffee buzz going. I'm sorry. Let's. Go. What? Crossface, really? I'll tell you something uh, that I love to do. Uh, as I get ready, this is going to be Chaotic Old Boar has his coming up right now. It's a band. Um, let me get ready for this. I think one of the things that I love to watch is something called, um, and it's, it's in England, I believe, or, or in the EU. Oh, I don't, forgive me. EU is everything. I don't. Don't come for me in the comments. It's called the tattoo or something, the something tattoo. And that's where each one of these countries come together with their more traditional style of um, this represents Ireland, this represents Scotland, this represents, you know, the the marching bands from stuff like that. Very unique to watch all that, that, that choreography and that sound and that power. And it's such a great presentation. Okay. So let me get this together from Chaotic Old Boar. The name of this track is Thunderstruck. What? I kind of know what Thunderstruck is. It's a piano cover. All right. Is it ACDC's Thunderstruck? Wait, is, is that the band who did Thunderstruck? Hmm. I can't remember shit anymore. It's a heavy metal looking piano to me. Oh wow, check out that piano design.
Got to be grinding off that tonic, though. That's a great arrangement right there. Saturation on the track right there. Ooh, I just got a little chicken skin. This is great. for the uh, scale runs. Yeah, taking from two of the comments here, there is some ham with that cinematic, cinematic performance. Very cinematic, extremely. Um, the, uh, the, the, when I see two pianos, uh, piano is, pianists playing together, there is such a, you know, because just, just, I'm just saying, when there's two piano uh, players playing together, the uniqueness and the arrangements have to be so well defined that they're just not stepping on each other's, you know, uh, uh, as often as they probably do anyhow we don't detect it because they hit the same exact notes at the same exact time and stuff but the separation is like okay who's going to be handling the you know the higher octaves who's handling the lower octaves in that uh, kind of decision that would i guess have to be pay, uh, made like that i think covering that track is um is an excellent way um first of all show a little honor to i guess a classic legacy acdc track number one number two 
Um, bringing the pianos into the mix like that in, in the darkness of that kind of performance, great design of the pianos, you know, how it was shot and everything with the, you know, the Tesla looking thingy with the electric and all that. You know, piano, piano plays a very important part in a lot of metal tracks, even if you don't hear it or know, or, or <coughs> excuse me, uh, like guitar players pulling phrasings that things that they may have heard from, you know, requiems from, you know, I don't know, Mozart had some great requiems and stuff like that. The octave movements and stuff like that that would come from arrangements and stuff like that that get pulled into, that's why we have neoclassical metal. You know, because of that influence and, the, you know, the piano is just a tremendous, tremendous, tremendously important instrument that, uh, you know, doesn't in the metal world, it's not out there. It's not going to happen unless it's in really big cinematic metal production. And then a lot of times that's translated into, you know, a keyboard, a synth, you know, um, you, but it adds it adds a, a very powerful dynamic if, if bands, you know, decide to take that chance to say, hey, it was let's get some piano in there. And lately I've heard some uh, tracks that have been from more pro uh, progressive bands that was going, oh man, check out that guy's left hand. You know, you may not see the pianist, he's back there in the corner, you know, he still doesn't get a lot of love, you know, in a metal kind of band or something like that, but I could sit there and listen to some left-handed kind of work that's going on there <coughs> and pull it out. So what a great freaking listen. I hope that doesn't get blocked on YouTube, man. That, does, that was just phenomenal. Very, very talented, great arrangements in that. Beast 618. Oh, guys, we're, we're going to be doing an artist I don't think I've ever done here on this channel. And this is from Jacob Collier. Uh, this is from Beast 618. And this is Jacob, Jacob Collier featuring... This is Bridged Over Troubled Water. Stand by, and it's featuring somebody. So let me get it ready. And we can go from there. Stand by. Bridge over troubled water. No, Jacob Collier is actually a legend right now in the music world. He's a he's a young composer musician that has a little bit of this um, uh, incredible energy and and love for not only the music but for teaching. And showing the secrets of music, uh, a little bit of like um, Bobby. Oh God, what's his last name? The acapella guy, the gentleman. He's older. He's like my age. But he, do 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 do. What's it, what's his name again? Um, he has the same energy and love for music where. Um, not only does he love to play the music, but he loves to show under the hood. And I think that's just so wonderful, you know? I just think it's unbelievable. Okay. Here we go. Let's listen to Jacob Collier. Uh, Bobby McFerrin, yes. Thank you very much, Turnip. When you're weary, feeling small, And tears are in It's those arrangements right eyes. there. <laughs> I just got all chicken skin. I will dry them all. I am by your side. When times get tough. And friends just can't be Falls so hard 
That run she just did. track that was that you know i know a lot of people here were kind of chiming in about the gospel um influence and energy of it uh you know historically gospel um music uh, is attached obviously to religion that's just how it's been branded to us that particular kind of arrangement and composition and harmonies and glory and the sounds and the positive uplifting uh energy that that brings so in association, the gospel would be religious. You know, sometimes that's not a thing that, you know, you choose to listen to um, because you're not maybe you're not in that vein of of um, of that religious part of the world. So you don't get enough of it. And so when something like this comes out and it's done not only to an incredibly classic song, 
but it's infused with incredible melodic um, representation by these singers, you know, different instruments. I think it was two or three different singers there. It's wonderful that, that a track like this um, brings forth that gospel-esque vibe, but it's, it's very jazz. It's very, um, you know, the, the voicings that are going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. Joe Pass, Oscar Peterson style, polyphonic, just block chord playing, you know, the, the origins of something of that nature. Um, and, I, and, I, and I believe that um, uh, Mr. Collier is, is very steeped in jazz. Uh, I, I only know him from YouTube videos and watching him speak and stuff like that. I don't know of his education, where he graduated from or, or if he was a young phenom, if you would, in the music world, you know, by four years old, he wrote his first, you know, orchestral piece. But um, there was such movement in some of the voicings. But what's wonderful is that there was a lot of, uh, there was uh, probably about a third of the, of the track in the arrangements that allowed it, that gave it enough space to be what I would consider, c consider the complexity of some of the voicings that were going on to support the melody. There were a few times where the arrangements in the back were settled. It wasn't like a second, fourth, ninth, <laughs> and kind of this constant like waiting to release, resolve, you know, in a, in a major third kind of way. There were some things that were just really nice and simple, you know, and laid it back. And the other thing about this track, which was just freaking phenomenal, is the actual dynamics, dynamics of the supporting choral arrangements. And so you know what that is, right? Louder, softer, shapes and tones of vowels, or in the case of doing a choir, you know, it could be doots, do 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 or whatever it is, you know, syllables or, or vowels that, you know, the composer might, you know, uh, say right here, uh, you know, if it goes from ooh to da 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 da, -da you know, to boo da ba 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 do ba ba just the changing of the shapes, not necessarily words, but that adds, you know, a percussive element into you know, the choral arrangement. Obviously, I'm goobering about it because it was just freaking amazing. And of course, the other thing is too, I've said this before when I've heard more current acapella type, type pieces of work, is that the engineering now is so pristine and so wonderful. Yes, big tip of the hat for the engineer as well. And so now the, 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 the breathing essence of a lot of uh, musicians as they're singing in choirs, there's so many new details that are present because the tones could be shaped uniquely in the mixing of it. I'm not talking about side chaining like a little out there. I just got through listening to a track. Periphery did an acoustic track, uh, a thing I released on the Decomposer Lounge yesterday. And the background vocals to me sounded way too, you know, perfect and all that, you know. So you can take that lemon, you can take that current engineering thing to the limit you know and get a sound that's like yeah sure there's a singer and all that but it's it's so compressed or so something it almost doesn't sound real in this case every wisp of a breath or uniqueness of a tone with the new mics you know and stuff like that and, and compressors and it's so unreal my very first um i'm going on about this for a second so my very first super exposure to acapella came from buenos aires in argentina <clears throat> there was a band called Buenos Aires Ocho. It was an a cappella band. That was literally the very first album I ever heard in my life that I can recall. Like my very first music influence was by an a cappella band from Argentina. And if you look them up, they, you can still find stuff on YouTube. But listen to a track like that, which is still stunning arrangements. And if you were to take that same exact arrangement with young with vocalists now and engineering techniques, it would be completely... Um, Oh, it would be much more impactful just by the basis of engineering techniques and stuff and so on and so forth. So anyhow, I went on because I did. Because I do, because I'm old. I go on and on and on. It snows in Australia. I think it's uh, nighttime in Australia, so I don't know if he's here. So I'm going to do his track now. <clears throat> and then after that, I'm going to do Vodka Man's. And then I'm going to take a short pee break, like two minutes, seriously. And then it's just wheel of cheese for the rest of the, 
for the rest of the morning, okay? Uh, this is a band called, well, the song is 198D. And I think, oh, I can't, the, the writing cut off there. So I'm going to start it, and then I'll let you know what the rest of this is. All right, this comes from It Snows in Australia. And the name of the band is... At the dry oh, 198D, is that the name of the band? I like that giant boom box. <laughs> Brings back memories. Early morning in the Aussie good world. It's like somebody pointing a finger in your neck and holding it there. quick some production thoughts on this there's there is that feeling and I'm on kind of hit it on a little bit there <clears throat> where this was maybe a smaller recording studio or a smaller kind of vibe a very intimate vibe um, that nice room sound on the snare is really authentic great the kick, obviously there is some miking going on in there because the kick doesn't really resonate. There isn't like an early reflection of any kind of a room in there as much as the snare has a lot more of the breathing room of, 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 of the, um, uh, the reverb of the room, let's just say. Don't know. Most likely it's captured by overheads that might be out of ways and just kind of married in with uh, uh, you know the snare miking and stuff. But each one of those instruments, what's really super cool in my head as I think about it as an, as, as an engineer, is it doesn't sound like they tried to manipulate with compression and stuff. There's this guitar here that does a really important like do da 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 And you're not trying to force it with compression to stay in a volume pocket. Compression, you can kind of do that. You can kind of use compression technology to take a sound and where it's not as loud it'll make it up and if it's too loud it'll bring it down a lot of different you know artifacts can happen with that that this track is a 100 percent uh performance meaning like it's it's a good chance that they played this one through one you know one time through in a studio or as a band 
you know, maybe recorded three or four or five or six times. It doesn't matter. And I love, love, love that sound. I, I think that's just a really important part of why the song is so good. Hey, Harmon, need you. John Anderson. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's a good call. Also, the dynamics between the chill sections and the punching up like this was really bold, real authentic, though. Like I said, there's just there wasn't a lot of trickery in post or anything going on here. This was a band. I felt like I was sitting in a small, you know, club venue or something like that, you know, where you could just get a get a vibe of the musicians on there. I got that same vibe just from listening to this. <coughs> That's a nice little tip of the hat for the engineering too to keep that essence in there. Um, Sunny Day Real Estate, I'm on. I actually did one or two of their tracks. They're fantastic. I think I have them on the Decomposer Lounge. I got to go back and visit them. Thanks for reminding me. So, okay, let's go into Vodka Man with your $40,000. Yes, guys, $40,000 for his dono boost. <laughs> you still here, Vodka Man? Ah, we're going to do some uh, Ark Knights. Ark Knights! And the song is Requiem. Which bit? <laughs> it's like some kind of, I don't know, I, th I, my, I hear the word bits and it's so weird. If you live long enough like I do, like I am in my 60s now, Words trans like it meant one thing in 1960 meant another thing in 1990 means a whole other thing right now. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right, let's do this for vodka, man. Thank you so much for your 40k bits. Let's go. Уже к 
как бы чужому бреду. Just briefly, um, I am just so blown away on how precise the, the, the guitar engineering is and performance of the guitar players. At first I was going, man, are they using a doubler? Or, you know, did they actually have a double mic set up for the guitar? And then I realized, no, these are, these are doubled guitar parts. And the only way that I feel, if I'm right, that I can detect that is because there's a little bit of finger noise that's different in, in certain chord changing that... I go, okay, well, that sounded a little different. I mean, that's why if I was more focused on the guitars than I was at the melody and vocals at the beginning, because I was going, this is an unreal, perfect, you know, guitar um, performance and engineering. And once this guy's voice gets in there, I think uh, the, the, uh, the, I've said this before, the languages um, of songs to me make such a difference because of the unique uh, shapes of the mouth in vowels or syllables and stuff that, you know, English speakers wouldn't be using unless, you know, I mean, obviously in English there's dozens of different um, accents. Uh, but it just, there's this weird, there's this really wonderful roundness in the mouth and darkness with the tone of the voice that the Russian language, of, of which I don't understand, obviously, in its pronunciation brings to it as, as a... Um, as a tonal performance. I don't know, I'm blabbing on. I'm just saying. И только пыльные цветы И звонко дивны И следы Куда это в никуда И прямо мне В глаза гляди, и скоро гибелью грозит огромная звезда. Уф, hello, no, jeez. great reverb on that and that's one of the things that you can actually have a little more fun with too there was no percussion in this whatsoever except for the percussive delivery that the musicians were uh, providing um so you can have a little fun with a pre-delayed long oh shit i'm gonna sneeze oh here comes quato <laughs> ah! sorry guys Jeez, Quato came out for a visit on that one. Um, the, thank you. It, the, the tone of his voice was absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I already talked all about that. I loved how now at the end it lifted into more of arrangements and stuff and got a little wider, a little higher in the arrangements. I heard it sounded like a mandolin, but I know that around the world in different cultures, there are a lot of guitars that are smaller shaped, could be four, five, six stringed, 
you know, some of them could be doubled, you know, or single. But there is that kind of early branding I got with listening to some Russian music in the 60s when I was um, doing some studying with my dad and stuff. That, 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 uh, that tactic, that, that, music, that um, performance dynamic of the constant you know, so I couldn't, it didn't sound like a mandolin. It wouldn't make, if this was a Russian produced song, I'm sure that the Russians probably have some um, instrument that's very similar to the mandolin. Um, but it was such a great track. I was just really overwhelmed with uh, two things, actually. The tone of this guy's voice and, and that baritone kind of vibe. Actually, I think he, he went down bass uh, a couple times down into that zone. Um, and the musicianship. I thought it was brilliant. So, Vodka Man, thank you. Samokin, that was. I really appreciate it. So... Oh, Mikisisu, thank you for the resubscribe. I appreciate it. How are you? Okay, Makuzia, you're up next. How are you, Makuzia? And thank you so much. Allah, generosity. You, you better be in the house, Makuzia. Are you here? Are you here? A rare EU-friendly Jeep stream. I like that. <laughs> so Makuzia brings us some anime. So let's see what Makuzia wants. And uh, the source is 86. Is that the name of an anime? No problem, Vodka Man. That was a great track. Easy for me to expound on. 86 is the name of the source. The name of the song is Hear My Voice from Makuzia. All right. Let's go. I a super classic composer, legendary. Um, it looks like there was two composers on this one. So uh, Hiroyuki Sawano and Kota Yamamoto. Um, there was a really, what's really fun when I said earlier, what a great track to actually, uh, oops, looks like I, I might be hicking up a little bit on my stream, sorry. Um, a really great track to build from, to build with. Uh, the patterns that are set at like at the very beginning, there was a pattern that was just kind of moving and moving and moving with the chord changes. Then another arrangement comes in and it builds and it builds and it builds. Then there was a nice shift and there was some dynamic pullback, you know, and that, that's when it drifted into that kind of floaty piano, lo-fi pseudo floaty piano with the reverb on it. And then I heard that, that uh, we call it a motion or I call, it's, it's known as a motion pad. So it's a pad that gives you that ethereal thing, but there's a light sequence or something that's happening behind it. So, um, uh, but the whole thing is a build. It's something that you, you just, uh, you start to get into, you start, it's a little hypnotizing. It's not, there's not a lot of traumatic arrangements going on there. It's just really, let's just stick to the core of getting the individual locked into a, you know, a groove of sorts. And that's what this was. I believe so. How do you guys feel about it? You guys dug it, right? It looks like it from the from the comments here. Makuzia, thank you so much. Always coming into the streams, always being extremely generous. I really appreciate it. And so, yeah, uh, I don't know if I think you may have left. I think you may have dropped this in and left. <laughs> don't worry, it'll be up on the VOD if it doesn't get blocked, uh, which is unfortunately something that's been happening. But the blocks have been releasing lately, so it's one of those things where I drop it onto the VO onto the YouTube channel. And um, um, then I file these disputes going, it's never, and all of a sudden, boop, 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 you know, so 